so far, not all these people have resigned, all been sacked. Nor does that matter how many of the nine they have become members, all the 20 fled champions. None of these people have even had the decency to use the word sorry. Mr. Mayor, are we really expected to believe that people who have allowed the services to deteriorate are the same people who are now going to turn it around? And Mr. Mayor, try telling that to some of the children of Council's care that Will is now the country's most improved council. That's if you can find them. Mr. Mayor, I fully support the Conservative motion. And I really do believe it's time to lay the roof moved over and let somebody take control who really cares about the children of yeah. About the vulnerable yeah. people. Yeah. About, about the yeah. people who use games of course. Yeah. About the children who yeah. slip their yeah. skills. Mr. Mayor, yeah. they are disgraced.
have a duty to our children, particularly the most vulnerable, to provide the best possible quality services. <coughs> Mr Mayor, as pledge champion for vulnerable children, I am absolutely clear, nothing but the best, it's good enough. I believe everyone in this chamber has a responsibility to the people of the world and to themselves to work together to put things right. Mr Mayor, in my short time as champion for vulnerable children, I have met with both senior officers and I reviewed our strategies in depth and I am fully aware of where our challenges and strengths are. We have clear priorities to focus in the coming months. We must support children to live at home in their own community and prevent them from entering care. We must ensure that children who need protection have good, consistent plans to support them to be safe. And we must focus on those children who cannot live at home, making sure that they live in homes where they feel safe, secure, and supported to reach their full potential. This strategy, Mr Mayor, is already in place and is focusing on the needs of children, young people, and their families. It is child-centred, outcome-driven, and focused on a child's journey. The voices of children, young people, and their families are at the heart of the strategy and will continue to be so as it's delivered, Mr Mayor, and I have every confidence in our children's department to do just that, and I will continue to support them in my role as champion. We are already making great improvements, as Councillor Gilchrist has already referred to tonight, and it would be wrong, Mr Mayor, for us to forget the many excellent aspects of children's services in our world. Ofsted recognised the fantastic contribution which is made by our foster carers throughout Wirral, and during my time as pledge champion, I was honoured to be asked to open the All Walks of Life campaign, foster an event in Birkenhead Park, celebrate the first year of existing carers, and we're all fostering ambassadors for all their dedicated work and to hopefully generate some publicity to attract new carers. And I think that this chamber should recognise the work that these people do every day. I also believe, Mr Mayor, that the work of our children and care council should not go unnoticed. This is a group of young people in the care of the council who are voluntarily giving up their time to help others in similar situations. Mr Mayor, their work is heroic, impressive young people who, you know, and offset them to even said they recognise their incredible work. Mr Mayor, the leader of this council was right to call a special meeting of the council to debate these issues. They are serious and they are related to a service which many would say, including myself, is our most important responsibility. And I believe we all bear some responsibility for that situation we find ourselves in. And I know that we all have responsibility to work together. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
scrutiny is a very, very important part. It's not about just trying to throw some political footballs in your direction. It is actually about trying to get what's good for the children and vulnerable, most vulnerable people of the world, the best, which I actually believe the people on the other side want as well. Ultimately, however, I also worry that there will be some political obfuscation within this. And as a result, I believe, after a great deal of mental soul searching, that I must ask for the leader of the council to stand down at this particular point so that there isn't any political involvement in the outcome of what we're about to do. Thank you. Okay, Councillor David Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, very interesting comments made by uh, two colleagues, Councillor Wilkes and uh, Kelly, especially in the, the finance of uh, what, what needs to be done and moving forward. Uh, I'm very pleased to hear that we're going to have a, a working party and a new board to actually look at all the relevant points that have been highlighted by, by the Oscar report. Two things have come to mind. As much as we're looking at ways of improving things, I hope that we'll also be looking at the reasons why these failings happen, given that, uh, as has previously been said, this particular department was uh, a very good department and an excellent at uh, I take the comment quite freely of what the uh, champion said. There's not one person in this room who does not support our social workers uh, and all the relevant people who help our children. It's the report itself that states bad management by governments, and that's where the problem lies. We need to make sure that we get all of those things right. So when you're moving forward with your improvement board, you need to make sure that you do do that. Um, I hope, I hope, I really do hope, he put as much energy into making sure that this is correct as the cabinet has gone in from months in the hub, the youth hub in Bay now, and the golf club. So you're
example of that is the unwillingness to change our feeble scrutiny arrangements. The wind up council clearly, just a moment there. And Mr. Mayor, the confidence our working council embraces scrutiny is ensures that opposition councillors chair committees and that every member has the space to question officers. It encourages councillors to challenge officers and not simply assume they are doing a good <coughs> job. It should not be the position of any councillor to instinctively defend officers. And furthermore, in the light of the obvious failure of the last improvement board to address cultural issues, what guarantees can be offered that the new board will do any better? Will it again just focus on process and procedures? And what measures have been put in place to guarantee Okay. I'm just going to say, for the final time, it must be okay for people to say we have a problem. If we don't address that key issue, we will simply rerun this debate further down the line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Chris Briggs. Yes, I echo what um, the previous speaker said. Um, the independent Joseph Roundtree Foundation report on the impact of the cuts on local governments in poorer communities did indeed um, show that in a number of the cities that were um, looked at in this report had, were experiencing a rise in the number of looked at for children. Um, you know, this isn't happening by coincidence. This is a result of the cuts to services and resourcing that's been going on in our country since 2010 when the Conservative and Lib Dem coalition came in and decided that um, these cuts were needed to be made. And we're all, since 2010, a little reminder that we have had to take 156 million out of our budget and use and the uh, people on this side of the, of, of the chamber wonder why, why there may be some problems in some of the services that we are uh, in charge of, 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 of carrying out. Look, these are horrific cuts um, and they, uh, there's no coincidence that some of these families who are living on the edge are being pushed over the edge and that is something which we are aware of and which we are trying to deal with. Nevertheless, nothing, nothing can excuse anything that's come out of the uh, Ofsted report um, regarding the lives of our most vulnerable children and young people. You know, they are our children and young people and we do care about them. There has been no spin, there has been no attempt to massage anything. We are here saying very carefully, very clearly, we know that this has to stop, that change has to take place. Um, but you know, it's beholden on all of us, isn't it? Every single one of us in this chamber to say, let's come together, let's not use it as to use a um, political game and, and, and use it as a political football, but let's have an open and transparent debate, which I think we are starting to have, which is good, whereby we all have, take a look at ourselves, all of us. We don't just make speeches, but each one of us says, we are all corporate parents and we've got to do better for our children and young people, our vulnerable young people out there. If we can all say that honestly, then that will begin to be able to shift the culture and make us, um, you know, make us better at, at looking after the, our, our young people. You know, this is the chance for us to all work together to ensure that, you know, we, we double our efforts to protect our, our <coughs> children and young people um, and the vulnerable members of our community. And we are determined on this side of the house to do it. And I think what we should go up, if we want to be honest and serious about this matter, then we should all go from here, from this debate, feeling that we should work together if we really do care about our children and young people. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Is this council my name to speak for the fourth time? Mr Mayor, can I just say, um, as this debate starts, I find it personally quite depressing. Uh, we have a public gallery that is almost full, and yet we couldn't even agree amongst ourselves how long the debate could take place for. It doesn't go over well for dealing with some of the difficult issues that are highlighted within this report. And like all councillors, and I think Councillor Spriggs excellent points, and you know, who could disagree with what Councillor Spriggs just said. Um, I, I don't care, Mr. Mayor, whether this took place in the Conservative Council, a Labour Council, a Lib Dem Council, a Monster Radio Living Council, it doesn't matter. The fact is that kids in this borough, young people in this borough, have been badly let down uh, by a failure of process and by a failure of political will. Mr. Mayor, the standards that we expect of others, such as school governors, of families in this borough, of 
teachers and care workers we're not applying to ourselves. <coughs> had, some of these, uh, had some of these incidents been exposed within families in this borough, this council would have rightly taken the children off those families and put them into care. And yet those children who are in our care have nowhere else to go. We are the last resort for many of these kids, and yet they are left, or as Leslie Rennie has pointed out, 27 have just been lost altogether. In fact, Mr. Mayor, such was the dilapidation of the service under, under the current administration, you know, not making a political point, but under the current administration, we didn't even know that one of the 27 young people leaving care is now homeless until Ofsted points it out to us. Just let that sink in for a moment. We didn't know that somebody leaving care went on to become homeless. Whatever the politics of it, that is unacceptable. It is unacceptable in 2016. If that was happening in a lesser developed country, we would be appalled. The fact it is happening in our own borough is even worse. Mr. Mayor, some of the councillors, uh, many of us, the 66 who are here today, most of us will, when we finish our terms in office, whether we've slung up by the electorate or die in office or resign, we'll go back into obscurity, go back to our families. Some of the 66 here, probably the younger members, may go on to higher political things, either they become an MP or, or a mayor, in which case, good luck to them. But equally, Mr. Mayor, a small number of councillors in this chamber will leave office with regrets. And I believe, Mr. Mayor, that the decisions that are taken tonight, Councillor Tony Smith will leave office, when he does leave office, with regret. Now, Tony Smith, I think, is one of the good guys in this council. I like Tony Smith, I think he's totally committed. But I think anybody in the right mind who does not see this report as a resigning issue needs to think very long and hard about why they're not resigning. Now, we know that Tony Smith is a good guy. I've said that already, and I'll say it to him in private, I'll say it to him in public. These failings are a failure of political will. The political book for this report must stop with Councillor Sir Tony Smith. Now we know why Councillor Tony Smith is not resigning, because if he resigns, then somebody senior within the authority must resign. Now as far as I can see, the, the super director, strategic director, whatever the job title is, isn't here. The chief executive is here. Five years ago, the chief executive of this council was tweeting, tweeting about the issues facing children's services across the country. So none of us can say we did not know the issues that were facing us as an authority, notwithstanding budget cuts. I'll, I'll wind up now, Mr. Mayor. What I would like to see, Mr. Mayor, uh, and I remember 2010 when the bins were a week late on collecting the bins, the, the, the party opposite demanded our resignation. If we had to resign, or if we faced calls to resign because the bins were a week late, why did no one of the members opposite face resigning when 27 kids go missing? But Mr. Mayor, the last point, Mr. Mayor, in terms of the approval board that we've promised, yes, another improvement board. I would like to ask Mr. Miller, are we seriously led to believe that those who got us into this mess are the same people who are going to get us out of this mess? Yeah. And the leader of the council, can we have this assurance tonight, Mr. Miller, that the improvement board will meet in public with the members of the public able to attend the improvement board so that they too can see the improvements that he is planning, that he has talked about in his opening remarks, so that anybody, including the press, can attend the improvement board and report back on it. That would be my request to him, Mr. Miller. Uh, finally, can I thank all those members, uh, Mr. Mayor, for the contributions today. I found them all interesting, regardless of the party politics. And I say again, I don't care whether it's Labour, Liberal, or whatever, Tory. I would hope that the improvements we've heard about that have been promised tonight can be delivered. But my only concern is that the people who are delivering those, if those improvements cannot be the ones who got us into the mess, Mr. Mayor.